I'd like to take geometry at a glance in the chapter Quadrilaterals Useful for Class 9th. We have in the syllabus the angles of property of a quadrilateral, types of quadrilaterals, properties of a parallelogram, and midpoint theorem. We take quadrilateral ABCD. Here the diagonal DB divides this quadrilateral into two triangles. First we consider the top one, triangle ADB. Apply angle sum property. The sum of three angles is 180. Now down one, triangle DBC. We apply again angle sum property. Call it as equation 2. Let us now add both the equations and arrange the angles in a proper way. We get angle A plus B plus C and plus D. That means the sum of four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees which is called as angle sum property of a quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals can be broadly divided into three categories trapezium, parallelograms and cut. Again parallelograms can be divided into rectangle, square and rhombus. We see the individual properties in the coming slides. Look at this quadrilateral. One pair of opposite sides are parallel. Such a quadrilateral is called as trapezium. Now look at this quadrilateral. One pair of adjacent sides are equal. Even the second pair. So two pairs of adjacent sides are equal and one pair of opposite angles are also equal. The diagonals, they intersect at right angles and one diagonal is bisected. Such a quadrilateral is called as cut. Let us consider a quadrilateral ABCD. Look at there one pair of opposite sides parallel, even the second pair of opposite sides. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now one pair of opposite sides are equal, even the second pair. So here also both the pairs of opposite sides are equal. Now the opposite angles, the second pair. So both pairs of opposite angles are equal. Now the diagonals Yes, the diagonals intersect each other and look at the first diagonal bisected. Even the second one is bisected. So the diagonals bisect each other. So a quadrilateral which is having all these properties is called a parallelogram. We have a parallelogram ABCD here. We know already that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal. By chance, if one pair of adjacent sides of a parallelogram are equal, then we have a parallelogram with all the four sides equal. Such a parallelogram having all the sides equal is called a rhombus. And in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and the diagonals bisect each other also. Let us take a parallelogram. Any of the corner angles of a parallelogram, if it becomes a right angle, then that parallelogram is called a rectangle. So we have the rectangle here and each of the angles of a rectangle is a right angle. The diagonals of a rectangle are equal in length and the diagonals they bisect 
each other. Now we see the properties of a square. It's a quadrilateral in which all the four sides are equal. The diagonals of a square are equal. And each of the corner angles of a square is a right angle. And the diagonals bisect each other at right angles. Now we see the sufficient conditions for a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. Number one, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. Both pairs of opposite angles are equal. The diagonals bisect each other and a pair of opposite sides are parallel as well as equal. If any one of these four properties is satisfied, then we call that quadrilateral as a parallelogram. Now we take midpoint theorem. The statement is given to us. So we are given with a triangle ABC. D is midpoint of AB. E is midpoint of AC. And we have to prove that the line segment joining the two midpoints is parallel to the third side and is half of the third side. We see the proof in the next slide. Now we start the proof. ABC is the triangle. DE are the midpoints. Now we extend DE up to F such that DE is equal to EF. We join FC. Now we try to prove the congruency between triangle ABE and CFE. DE is equal to FE because by construction and both the angles are equal, they are vertically opposite angles and AE is equal to CE since E is the midpoint of AC. So by SAS congruency both the triangles are congruent, triangle ABE and FCE. By CPCT we can say that ABE is equal to CFE but they are alternate interior angles therefore AB is parallel to CF that means BD is parallel to CF. By CPCT, we can also say that AD is equal to CF, but AD is equal to BD since D is midpoint. Therefore, we can say that BD and FC they are equal. That means one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and equal. Therefore, BDFC is a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, again, the opposite sides are parallel and equal. Take parallel, BF is parallel to BC. But BE is a part of BF, therefore BE is parallel to BC. It is proved, one part is proved. Now take equality, DF is equal to BC. But DE and EF, they are equal. Therefore DE becomes half of BF. But we can say that BE is also equal to half of BC. So even the second part is proved.